Welcome to the 13th episode of Let's Conquer Books. Stephen Hawking said, Nothing is better than reading and gaining more and more knowledge. In this episode, I talk about how the Compound Effect book will help you understand that minor adjustments practiced consistently have a lasting effect. Also, creating momentum requires establishing daily rituals, weekly and monthly rhythms, and tracking systems to check routines for consistency. C. And lastly, be an active participant in decision making. So let's get into it. I'm your host, Alexander the Great Reader, and today I'm talking about the Compound Effect book by Darren Hardy. He used to be the publisher of Success Magazine, a magazine I was a subscriber for, to for a long time. Had really good monthly interviews with authors, successful athletes, businessmen, successful people. I recommend it to anyone. Really good reading. It's very optimistic, very positive, very helpful reading. One of the best magazines, I think, out there. And he also wrote... A book called Entrepreneurial Roller Coaster. That's a very good book too if you're wanting to understand that being an entrepreneur is a roller coaster ride. You're going to have ups and downs and he explains it well and he gives good case studies. So he's also known as a famous public speaker. You can see his speeches on YouTube. They're very entertaining, very thought-provoking, a lot of practical advice, real-world advice. Now, the book, The Compound Effect, has a theory that when um, when minor changes are practiced over a long period of time, momentum can keep it going until the change becomes a habit. That's very powerful theory because it comes from the theory of compound interest, a finance theory where interest is earning interest. So the longer you keep compounding interest, the more interest you earn. That's the theory. So an example would be if I deposit $1,000 today, and every year, the first of the year, I deposit another $1,000 for 40 years, and this account is producing 6% interest. I never touch it. I just let it keep compounding. I calculate it online. That would give me $170,000. You know, and all I did was put $40,000 of my actual money. That's the power of compound interest, and you can apply it in your life with the theory of compound effect. And Einstein was quoted saying that the eighth wonder of the world is compound interest. So the first takeaway of the book I got was that minor adjustments to your personal life that are part practiced consistently over time have a longer lasting effect, effect on your quality of life than a change that lasts only a brief period. So the book gives an example of a plane with a minor course error early on and it misses its destination by miles just by a little course direction that error that wasn't dealt with so the same thing can be in a good way if you make on a minor adjustment because you have this journey you're on life is a journey if you make an adjustment it can really take you into another direction in life Language, he uses as an example, like don't start like, oh, I want to really advance. I want to invest in a 30 day program to help me learn Portuguese. They're going to it's going to be real intensive, real a lot of information. You should just start with learning simple words, foundational things, something long term. And you have to consistently practice it every day. That's the best strategy. So how did I use it? You know, I'm always, anything I'm talking about is how I use it. So I began reading small amounts of time. Every, when I first started, it was five minutes in the morning and five minutes in the evening. And then sometimes I would add five minutes in the afternoon later on. And I would, oh, every week I would add 10 seconds to my time. So it'd be five minutes and 10 seconds. A week later, five minutes and 20 seconds. And I kept growing and growing till today, an hour and 30 minutes a day, sometimes more. And it would have been right for me to just start like, okay, I want to read an hour and a half right away. So I'm going to read 30 minutes in the morning, 30 minutes in the afternoon, 30 minutes at night. 
I would have failed. But now, look, the compound effect of just doing this two, three years, uh, it's just accelerating. The other part of the aspect is reading easy books in the beginning, like Rich Dad, Poor Dad, Think and Grow Rich, How to Win Friends and Influence People. These are books that are practical, they're entertaining, they're not really deep. And once you get used to reading and reading, building up your reading time, you know, start dabbling a little into exploring philosophy, history, neurology, psychology, literature books. It would have been wrong for me to start there. Like, oh, I'm going to start reading philosophy and history books. I really didn't like that stuff. I didn't understand it. But the more you read, the more reading muscles you build, the more grit, the better growth mindset you start building. Start 10xing your goals. You know, going through that obstacle of getting to reading harder books. See, I'm, I'm restating all the prior episodes because it all coincides. It all, it all works together. It's the beauty of books. See, if I started reading difficult books, I would have not gotten to where today I'm reading difficult books. Right now I'm reading one called Atlas Shrugged, 1,000 pages. I've read the Bible front to back a couple times. So that's what happens when you start applying the compound effect. Second takeaway is instead of making decisions based on habit, you should be an active participant in decision making. So he gives an example of the habit of smoking and it's a compound effect. So you get cancer, plaque builds up in your vessels. And once you build a habit like smoking, it's difficult to stop. So he suggests to be aware that you can decide to stop something before it becomes a habit like he gives a suggestion like oh your friends at work every day go out to drinks and you create that habit to go always go out with them after work and have drinks and then you notice that you know they have two three rounds and every time they order more you say okay i'll have another one so that starts building he says that you have a decision to say no i'm not gonna go and drink with you guys and i'm not gonna have more drinks you know you can go once in a while, but you're making that decision. It's not becoming a habit. And you can skip a couple rounds, you know, like, no, I'm not going to have a drink this round. So how did I use it? I I started to read whenever possible. That was a decision I made. So while I was waiting in lines, waiting for my wife or someone shopping in the car, I always had a book or a book downloaded on my phone. That's the decision that I was making instead of, you know, watching, um, looking at my phone, looking at people walk around, people gazing. You know, I just said, no, I'm not going to make that a habit like most people. And I'm just going to read my book. Same thing when my family's watching TV or I'm at a gathering and people are watching TV. I grab my phone and start reading it. You know, right now, people see as normal as looking at your phone while other people are doing stuff so you could just be reading a book so that was that habit i decided to do which is compounding now and it's gonna it's helping me read more the takeaway three and the last one is creating the needed momentum for small changes to have a big impact requires establishing daily rituals weekly and monthly rhythms, and tracking systems to check routines for consistency. Now, example that he uses is if you're looking to start an exercise routine and eating healthy. So, you know, books, experts suggest morning is the best time. Get it out of the way. It'll help you with your energy during the day. But, you know, some people like my wife and a lot of mothers and fathers, we have kids and we got to get them ready So it's difficult. So just find the time in your schedule is what he was saying and stay consistent and add other aspects to this exercise and eating hold. He says, you know, at certain times you need to drink water because that's important. Uh, Getting a personal trainer to start accelerating your goal. Start separating time to consistently make healthy meals, you know, on certain days. Spend time online looking for recipes once a month so you don't get bored. Now, how I did it for books, and all these things I talk about is applicable in all types of life, whatever you're trying to do. But my, my this podcast, what I'm all about, my vision is books. It's all about books. So I wanted to read 60 books a year. 
So I found the best times for reading was in the morning, get it out of the way at nighttime. And I was using a timer because that, you know, that's how you stay consistent. That's how you make it a daily ritual. You grab the timer and boom, boom, you get it done. Another thing that helped me was consistently building my reading list online on Goodreads. That helped me to keep reading because I wanted to get to the next one and keep bringing that list down. Keep that hunger in me. And lastly, I, I participated in reading challenge. Goodreads has reading challenge. And that helps you track, you know, like if you're ahead, if you're behind, how many pages you're reading. Seeing those statistics, like Nick from Book Thinkers mentioned, it's gamifying. Gamifying the, the challenge of reading 60 books a year. That's what tracking does. And it helps a lot. So now... Just after, you know, three years of really concentrating and read, I've, I have the goal of reading 100 books a year. And I achieved that last year with 105 books. So imagine the compound effect of 30 years of reading 100 books a year. I'm excited to see where, that, where I'm going to be in 30 years. It's really going to change the course. This minor adjustment I started is going to change the course of my journey. I know it is. Well... That's it for the episode. The reading challenge, you know, my 2018 is 100 books. I've already read 34 out of 100. I want to thank my listeners, my subscribers, for having over 300 plays and downloads so far after 13 episodes. Uh, this, ep- this series is still going to be six, and I'm going to stick with it. And, you know, connect with me on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. The links are in the description. I spend a lot of time on Instagram, a little bit on Twitter, not very much on Facebook. So see you on the next one. Please subscribe to this podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, Google Play, or any other platform that provides podcasts so you don't miss the last episode part six of the life changing books that helped me read 105 books in 2017 which is the final part of the series